All right, so we get a lot of comments from all you internet ninjas out there um, about our medical gear, what we carry in our IFAC, our individual first aid kit, and uh, what kind of tourniquets we prefer, one type over another type. I don't care what kind of tourniquet you use so long as it's been approved by the committee for TCCC. As long as it's been approved by them, then it's a squared away tourniquet. Now, that said, out of all those hundreds of brands out there, we here at Tier 1 Group, their medical program, we prefer to push two particular types, uh, the Cat T and the Soft T Wide. Right? And on both of those, there's a new generation of them, and those are the ones that we prefer also. Now, my personal opinion for self-treatment, you want to use the Cat T, the new Cat T. That's uh, the one that's got the, the plastic windlass on it. Now, no matter which one you use, you guys need to mount it center of the front of your kit so that you can reach it with both hands. All right, now th the improvements of the Cat T over the old one is, um, well, they've, they went with tactical gray instead of the white. All right, that's not, that may be the only apparent difference, but the, the main differences are, if you notice a windlass on the old Cat T, that was our, uh, yeah, the old Cat T tourniquet, that was our big complaint, was this thing was, it was brittle, it would break under pressure. And also these tabs right here would break, they would snap. And um, guys didn't like the Velcro, all right? And so the new and improved version, all right, uh, the windlass is much more heavy duty. If I can get both these out here, look at the difference. They've really beefed that son of a gun up right there. Now, as far as these snapping on the side, you can see plainly that they've reinforced this thing. This thing's not going anywhere. Now, the, the chief complaint about using Velcro is that Velcro gets covered with sand, right? It will, It'll, Vel Velcro will get covered with sand. Let me open this puppy up for you here. So the way you would store it is it's ran through, the, the old cat had a double loop, and if you were gonna just use it with just yourself, you would just run it through the one bar and use the Velcro, because that allowed you to just pull it tight on yourself, like on your arm or your leg, because you only have one arm to pull it with. If you were going to use it on somebody else, you would run it through the separate thing. And that way, if the Velcro wasn't working, uh, you could still, the buckle would still hold it in place. Now, the problem with the old cat was, again, this plastic was flimsy and it would break. Fast forward to the new and improved cat, and this buckle is really beefed up. Now, one thing kind of iffy about it is it's only got one slot. All right, so it's, you're using the Velcro on this thing, guaranteed. Now, the reason why I prefer this one for self-aid is when you set it up, take it out of plastic and make yourself a big buddy tab on this thing. All right, so when you have it folded up, when you take this thing off your kit, it'll drop open, you slide it up over the limb, and then when you pull it, see, just pulling it once, it cinch down nice and tight. Fold it over and then you can start tightening it up. Now, um, it's that simple. You can't do that with the soft T tourniquet, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So for self-aid, if you, if you have to pick one tourniquet to use on yourself, I recommend the, the, uh, the Cat T tourniquet. All right, uh, they've beefed up the weak points in it before, and uh, it's a good tourniquet, really, it's a good tourniquet. Now, that brings us to the soft T tourniquet. If you have to treat somebody else, Again, my opinion, I prefer the new soft T wide. Now, um, difference between the two, I'm gonna show you the old soft T. Now, it doesn't have the Velcro, right? This windlass is, I mean, it's milled aluminum. This puppy is not gonna break. So that's a big advantage over the cat tourniquet. However, there were people that would complain about this buckle, this, uh, this hook on the buckle right here would actually straighten out. The metal would pull flat if you tightened it up enough. And sometimes big bleeders on a large wound, you've got to tighten that tourniquet up a lot. And then you, you pull it tight. All right, so what they've done on the new and improved Cat T, I'm sorry, Soft T, the Special Operation Forces tourniquet is that buckle, they have greatly reinforced this latch. 
It's much thicker, heavier steel, and in turn, because of that, they had to make the, the actual insert for it much heavier steel also. That, that puppy's very, very sturdy. You're not gonna break the windlass. This is a wider tourniquet. Uh, works great. And again, uh, for treating an, someone else, another casualty, this is, my personal opinion, the best tourniquet that's out right now. It is the Soft T Wide. All right, now, as far as self-treatment, it's much harder to pull that thing tight. I have to really keep working it to get it down tight. You notice how that took four or five ratchets to get it tight where I didn't have that problem when I was using the cat tee. So again, um, treating yourself, stick with the cat tee. If you're using it on somebody else, use the soft tee wide. Right, so there are differences between the two. They're not just knockoffs of, the, of each other. Now there's an old tourniquet. Um, this is what used to come in the, the old IFAX. Uh, the Marines issued them for quite a while. It's called a uh, TK4. It's basically nothing but an elastic band. There's a hundred different ways to put this thing on. They're dirt cheap. Nobody likes them. They're not sexy like these. Um, but that said, a lot of medics will still carry a couple of these. Here's why. Um, these are too big to put around a child. These are too big to put around a canine casualty, that military working dog that you might have in your unit. All right, so um, you can hook this thing around the limb. It's hard to do it on yourself. I'm not a wounded dog. But then you can pull that puppy and you can wrap it tight. All right, so it's, it's a much smaller tourniquet. They're cheap. You can make them out of just about anything. But anyways, that's, it's called the uh, TK4. It's an old tourniquet, dirt cheap. Me personally, if I just for myself or for somebody else, I wouldn't mess with them. I'd stick with the soft T wide or the uh, cat T if it was just for myself. But if you're, if you're a medic that's dealing with uh, canines or if you're working around uh, small children, keep the TK4 in mind because it is a great tourniquet for that. Now that said, where do you put that tourniquet? As far as storing it, like I said, bundle it up. It even They come with great rubber bands. Fold it up so that you can get to it and then place it somewhere on your body arm. A lot of people like to face it away so you don't have to worry about the windlass getting hooked up on the, the rung of that ladder or whatever. Um, personal preference. Right? Uh, but make sure it's somewhere where you can get to it with either hand. Um, now, that's where you store them. You need to be able to reach it with either hand. Now, um, when do you use them? Now, it's different as far as how you apply them. It's care under fire. The bullets are still flying. Your buddy's laying there in the street. That's considered care under fire. If that's the case, go as high as you can on the extremity, up in the armpit or high up in the groin. Place the tourniquet up high over the uniform. Get it as tight as you can and then crank that windlass down. Lock it in place and then drag that casualty out of harm's way into the nearest uh, concealment that you have. Get them into that building, around the back of the car, whatever it is, but you put that tourniquet on them right away. Put it high on the extremity and uh, on the outside of the uniform. Now, once you've got them in a good covered and concealed location, it might be inside that local store or you've got them in a vehicle or the helicopter where you're hauling, hauling tail away, that's now tactical field care. That's the case, you've got a little more time. You want to put it three inches above the wound and uh, get, it, get the, uh, the uniform off of it. You're going to expose the patient as part of uh, tactical care, tactical field care. Put it three inches above the injury, clamp it down, and uh, again, turn it till that bleeding stops. Right? So remember, the whole point of tourniquets, it's not about being a gear do and having something sexy on the front of your kit. Make sure it's something that, this is life-saving equipment here. You've got to get it on quick and you've got to use a tourniquet effectively. If you don't put it on right, it's not gonna keep those red blood cells inside the body. And guys, that's what stops shock and that's what saves, uh, saves lives on the battlefield. You've got to keep the blood inside the body. And the best way to do that is getting good uh, TCCC committee approved tourniquets onto that casualty as quickly as possible. So if you've got any other questions or comments, you know I read them. I read all of them. Feel free to leave your questions and comments below. Thanks for watching Tactical Rifleman. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.
Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.